Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 233 of Manage the Wild. I'm your host, Nick Madsen. Antler point restrictions, they suck. And in this podcast, I'm going to talk about why. The Utah Division is proposing studies uh, in the southern part of the state to increase the overall number of deer, to increase the number of opportunities to hunt said deer, and then to increase the overall satisfaction of their deer management practices, hunt opportunities for mule deer, and then the overall hunting experience. They're proposing three different studies, antler point restrictions, shortened general seasons, and restricted weapons. And amongst these districts or these units, they're going to try each one of those three. And then in the other couple, they're going to mix them up and try to find ways to increase overall hunter satisfaction. So in today's podcast, I'm going to be talking about um, antler point restrictions. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my audio a little better. We're going to be talking about antler point restrictions and why I think they suck. There's a lot of research. Uh, Every wildlife agency, uh, I believe, dreams of creating units where there's just massive bucks running everywhere. And every time somebody goes out for a mule deer, they are killing just a giant 36 inch wide four point. And whitetails, everybody wants a 30 pointer that's grossing 280. Like their whole goal is to find big mature deer. And with the amount of people, the amount of, uh, pressure going on and the overall habitat destruction destruction that all wildlife are facing just makes this more and more challenging. Why is the Utah Division of Wildlife then proposing something like antler point restrictions for a study when other studies in the past have largely shown that they're not effective? Well, Kent Hersey, who is giving the presentation in the very first minute of his presentation for the Utah Division of Wildlife, says, now i got to find it, that many decisions on buck harvest are based on social considerations and the desires of hunters. That's the only reason I think they're doing uh, antler point restrictions or APRs is because hunters believe that that'll work. They believe that more fawns, more yearlings will grow up to be larger, larger animals, bigger animals, more mature, more points, heavier, um, bases the size of Coke cans if they stop targeting the young ones. That's what they believe. Are they right? Research says no. Uh, I've got six studies pulled up talking about the effects of point restrictions, antler point restrictions. Uh, I'm going to focus on two. One was WAFA, the uh, Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies. They get together, they put together a very good paper titled Understanding Mule Deer and Antler Point Restrictions. And then there's another one uh, coming out of Wyoming, Basically, Wyoming wildlife managers, coordinators, and biologists got together, and they did what they call a critical review of mule deer antler point, antler point regulations, applications, and effectiveness. And there's a whole bunch going into it. Uh, in the Waffle paper, they talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the good is very few, and the ugly is there's a lot. The good is... Antler point restrictions reduce the overall pressure, hunting pressure. Less hunters are going into those units. So you are going to see less hunters. That's the good part. And then overall, it goes downhill from here. There's a partial good for roughly two to three years uh, in a lot of areas when they institute antler point restrictions, they see an increase in the number of in the buck to doe ratio. So if you uh, are managing for uh, 20 to 23 bucks for every 100 does, you're going to see a slight bump in the next two to three years when you start harvesting only those four points or better. And if you go any further past the next few years, more than three, more than four years, it really starts to create some problems. 
And that's why I don't like antler point restrictions. That was the only good, the bad. It puts all of your focus on the more mature class bucks. So Utah is facing severe drought and severe winters. And that is putting an overall hurting on a population that's already suffering from habitat loss. Mule deer all across the West, uh, the main thing they're suffering from is uh, loss of habitat and restriction of movement. Uh, their migrations are being cut off and habitat is being destroyed uh, for whatever reason whether uh, it's building or fragmenting or there's just a whole lot of habitat destruction going on. And so you add habitat destruction and then severe drought, severe winter, it creates more problems. So you're putting all of your pressure on your more, more mature class animal. And all that pressure does is kill off that mature class those are the ones that are able to tolerate the severe winters, the severe droughts, and those are the ones who have figured out where the good habitat is for them. You start to target them exclusively by making it uh, a point restriction, and so you start to lose that class. And what happens is you start to lose the trophy bucks later on. Uh, as you are killing off that more mature class, every time one gets into that, oh, boom, four points, they're going to be harvested because four point or better is difficult to find. I don't care what social media is going to tell you. Uh, a lot of the areas that the general hunter, I'm not talking about the 1% who are killing big bucks all the time and they're taking 10 days off. I'm just talking about your average hunter, the guy who goes out and averages three days because that's how many days hunters on average in Utah hunt mule deer during their hunts is three to three and a half days. So they are showing up and they are hunting Saturday, Sunday, and Monday and going home on Tuesday. They're taking one day off of work. And that's the amount of time that averages. Now, you've got those guys out there who are listening to the podcast going, no, it's easy for me to find uh, a mature, wide, uh, five-year-old four-point. And that's actually not the case uh, for the average. And that's what we're talking about. So you're going to be losing a lot of those trophy bucks that you're trying to protect by having more deer get there. Uh, antler point restrictions isn't going to help you with your fawns or your yearlings. Your whole goal is to get more deer to last longer into the mo those more mature prime years, uh, that four, that five, six, seven. That's what your whole goal is to get these fawns up to that age group. But you're still having mortality. You're still having severe drought, severe winter, habitat loss. They're still going through fences. They're still crossing roads. All of these things that want to kill your fawns and your yearlings, you're still having to deal with. So not only are you getting rid of that older, more mature class, but you're still having them the effects of mortality from all the other things that are killing fawns besides hunters. Hunters are not going out and targeting fawns. They are targeting yearlings. You're getting a lot of those spikes, those two points, those very small threes that are getting targeted, and you're going to save some of those, but they still have to survive the effects of winter and drought. Here in northern Utah, the one unit lost 75% of all deer. The only ones that probably made it through were those healthy, mature, prime animals. And now you're going to be selecting for them. So you would actually be even uh, start to lose deer. This is where the ugly really gets into play within this paper. Overall, hunter participation greatly reduces in these areas because they're having a hard time finding uh, those more mature class deer. They don't want to go into those areas because it's just hard to find. So participation goes down. They have to pass up on a lot of animals. So success goes down and overall harvest goes down. Well, the three tenants, there are three goals that they wanted to do in this study is to increase deer size or increase overall deer numbers. Uh, expand or maintain general season hunting opportunities and increase satisfaction. Well, not only in these areas are you decreasing opportunity for them and hunting for them because 
less people are going into these areas because uh, the legal obligation is is quite a burden. Uh, you're talking about an animal that's feeding at 400 yards away and you're supposed to find an inch to an inch and a half point that may be funny. Uh, nobody likes that legal obligation. And then uh, it's difficult to find that mature deer. So you're now, your overall goal of increasing hunter satisfaction now goes down because people are mad uh, about your deer management practices. People are mad about their available opportunities to hunt in these areas and their overall hunting experience is decreased because let's say they passed up on a really good one. They watched it and watched it. They decide not to shoot it because they couldn't quite tell somebody else kills it and it ended up being a legal buck. They get mad. So it gets worse. Uh, you're now legally uh, promoting what I call the social media factor because now you're telling them they can only kill mature deer and it's got to be 200 inches. It's got to be a 36 inch buck and it starts to take value from those young bucks and it just discourages hunters uh, from going out into these units. So I don't think it's that great. Uh, it'll, there's a lot of animals that are illegally killed in these areas. One study in Utah showed that up to 35% of the deer harvested in a unit were shot illegally and then left in the field. Um, the one that where they did the review out of Wyoming, up to 35% of the deer in the unit, the males that were killed were illegal. That's a super high percentage. So uh, I'm not a fan of antler point restrictions. Uh, I give kudos and praise to the Utah Division of Wildlife for doing for doing it. Um, they're really, uh, I think, on this one, mostly listening to uh, what hunters want, and hunters believe that um, antler point restrictions really work. Again, wildlife and in Utah, the deer management in Utah, they have five things that they're basing their management off. The first one is biological. They got to make sure they are taking care of these animals biologically. They have a techni the technical way of managing them. They look at financially, legally, and then sociopolitically. Biologically and legally, they are required to do certain things. They're using uh, the technical... Um, equipment around them to be able to uh, manage them. They're all looking at financially, how can they benefit? And if they benefit, then the wildlife will benefit from that financially. And then the main one, I think, uh, which is the socio-political one. That's the difficult one. That's where all of your random weird decisions that don't seem to fit biologically come into play is that socio-political one. This is where I think antler point restrictions come into play. Uh, it's more to appease hunters, but eventually uh, hunters become very unsatisfied with it. How can you increase overall maturity of deer that won't, that doesn't use antler point restriction? How do you grow big deer? How do you grow big males? There is a couple of different ways to do it. One is still offer the same number of tags, but offer a season so short that your success rate goes down. Because success rate will go down uh, the shorter your season is. Because people are like, well, I'm not going just for two days of hunting. I'm not spending $100 for two days. And in reality, uh, they're spending that much for three days uh, is the average here in Utah. Three, between three and three and a half days. So there are different ways that you can do it. One, stop hunting deer. Close down a unit every other year. But then you're not promoting one of those tenants, which is to increase opportunities as well as their hunting experience. So you're decreasing it, but you're going to get big deer. Um, and the other is completely cut tags. 
where you're still allowing hunting going on, but you're offering half of it. Again, you're not increasing the hunting opportunities and you're not increasing their mule deer experience. Hunter satisfaction goes down. But antler point restrictions, uh, they work briefly for two to three years. After three years, everything starts to go down. It's unfortunate this study will be only from 2024 to 2027 because I think it will show an overall increase in buck to doe ratios and people will be excited. And then right as it starts to get bad is when they're stopping their study. So that's what I got for you guys today. Hope you guys have a great day. Stay wild. Thank <laughs> you.